It's that time again, champions. Featured book time. So we've got Bob Cordell's Designing Audio Power Amplifiers. Now, I believe this is one of those books where um, you order it and like Booktopia or whatever print it up for you on the spot. Although it's called Designing Audio Power Amplifiers, uh, you get a lot out of it, even if you're not a power amplifier designer. So let's look at the chapters. The main reason I got it, it was to familiarize myself with the architecture of all the different types of amps. So when I look at an amplifier, I can say, okay, that's the VAS deference, the voltage amplifier stage. That's the complementary input pair. Um, that's the output stage. That's the output driver stage. That looks like a feedback network. That looks like a Zobel network. That looks like a protection circuit. That looks like a comparator that measures DC offset on the output stage and drives the protection circuit. Blah, 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 blah. So it essentially, if you're unfamiliar with the architecture of the circuit you're looking at, well, you're flying blind. You're just testing random shit. Now, everyone says, oh, you're a genius. You're a genius. You fix shit. I couldn't do that. You, you can. You've got to break down the blocks. Um, I'm really not smart, but breaking down the blocks enables me to fix shit regardless of my low IQ. So, so recognizing what blocks you're looking at makes it easier for a dumbass like me to fix an amp so starting from the start uh you've got basic uh performance specs uh the role of the power amplifier basic amplifier topology now this is where it gets interesting so essentially what he starts doing and i like the way he's done this is he starts off you know he's got the uh what was the mr men dude mr fast or something triangle one with legs uh, line level source gain 20 to 38 ohm loudspeaker essentially that's the you know building block of the whole system then he starts introducing things like oh you've got the impedance to worry about okay and then he starts showing you the absolute essentials to amplify for a you know for our applications and he starts to show the performance shortcomings of the simple amps and then there's some basic electronics in there, but you're kind of expected to have started with a pretty, you know, not comprehensive, but at least a, an intermediate electronics knowledge. Goes through a common emitter stage, just the, the basic gain stages, differential amplifier. That's what you see at the input of almost all solid state amps. Emitter follower, push pull ones anyway. Cascodes, current mirrors, <clears throat> current sources, voltage references, little tricks you can use like using LEDs as voltage references, uh, complementary feedback pair. So then he starts getting the, the basic model of an amplifier he showed early on. And he starts improving its performance piece by piece and starts making it something that you could actually, you know, have a reliable purpose for. Uh, so the amplifier sort of skeleton gets more and more complex and higher and higher performance as the chapters go on. See, you see this recurring circuit and is showing each improvement as you learn a new concept. He implements it into the circuit and it gets more and more complex, but in a good way, in a way that means its performance is acceptable. And he keeps rebuilding this circuit over and over again. Well, you're looking at the whole power amplifier, but none of the protection so far. Amplifier with two output pairs to uh, lower the drive impedance. Runs over the considerations with um, respect to like distortion and impedance. Uh, scaling up the amp for higher power. So you can see all the parallel stages there and all the uh, caveats with that. <clears throat> So building an amplifier, this is where you put into play all the stuff you've learned in the previous 90 pages and uh, you actually build an amp. Now you could run this on just like perf board or something or you could run a circuit board. It would be cool if you did like a similar to uh, electronics, um, art of electronics, if you did like a student manual, maybe offered some PCBs along with it and you could build the, uh, build the amp and measure its... Uh, performance and all of that kind of stuff 
Short circuit protection. So now we're getting into the protection circuitry, which I think is required in an amplifier. Uh, a lot of the most, the problem is a lot of the most reliable amps in the world, um, like the Galley and Krugers and stuff, have like zero protection. Um, you just got a baby in, but if anything goes wrong, half your amp turns to smoke. <laughs> so this is showing how you can have all your different inputs on a protection circuitry, offset measurement, temp measurement with an LM35 there thermometer. Uh, and all of that feeds in and ultimately controls the speaker relay. So it'll cut off the speakers and light up your little red LED there on the front panel to show that something's gone wrong. He goes into the power amplifier, grounding schemes, grounding architecture, I should say. That's what he named it. All the different tests. So when you first fire up your amp, testing the amplifier. So he actually intends for you to build this amp. And uh, passive initial inspection, passive test, preparation for testing, power supply test, front end test. So he tests all the separate sections independently until the uh, you know ass clenching moment where you fire the thing up. Test it with no load, small signal test under load, large signal test under load, temperature stability test, capacitive load test, which can be where a lot of amps fall over or isolate or do all sorts of weird shit. D offset, DC offset protection test, short circuit test. So, you know, that's he actually designed an amp rather than just following a schematic and just hoping it works, which is uh, where I was at before I had this book. <laughs> and then he gets into more and more complex stuff. Uh, it doesn't get into, like, you know, theory of, like, filters and stuff. That's kind of what... Uh, Douglas uh, Self's books for uh, but it's a fantastic book if you're doing just service work not not designing anything um, there is a PDF version floating around online however I don't I don't know about you guys but I just don't respond well to reading a computer screen I think my brain only really takes stuff in when I've got a hard copy book I don't know what that says about me so we, he goes into different output stage designs, MOSFET output stages, which uh, can be a bit of a mystery sometimes. You know, the lateral versus um, vertical MOSFETs, that kind of thing. Vertical MOSFETs are kind of, on the, kind of on the way out. So he shows you how to use lateral ones properly. Uh, there's no reason you can't. You just need to set the amp up for it, which is going to be the way that we're going to have to repair anything with vertical MOSFETs from now on we're going to have to adapt them to use lateral because the verticals are either prohibitively expensive or uh, just completely unavailable um, there is a company called Exicon which makes good quality ones I've used in the past to replace like the um, I think it was the Mesa Boogie Subway Bass and a few other amps mainly bass amps um, from the 90s 80s and 90s when the verticals were you know common as mud then you've got to change the circuit to suit the the laterals lateral uh, mosfets goes into the power supplies different ways to uh, get your various rails and your auxiliary rails that kind of thing uh, switch mode supplies it actually goes quite a bit into switch modes here which was interesting i guess because in solid state amps these days the the power supply and the amp work in tandem and uh gets into simulation and analysis using spice which is a lot easier to simulate solid state stuff than it is valve the models of uh, valve stuff isn't fantastic at the time at the moment the negative feedback controversy so it it does touch on the bullshit just misinformation bred by the audiophile dickheads um like oh you can't have negative feedback it's less pure or some equally asinine bullshit uh so it touches on that but it doesn't delve into the you know it doesn't feed the, the trolls it doesn't give them enough respect to really dig into their half-baked theories but it just shows you why they're bullshit which is cool microcomputers so it's talking about having uh amp control with a microcontroller which is pretty cool but it just just basically goes into the concept and class d audio amplifiers it runs you through the different types a half bridge and full bridge 
output stages, which is handy. Bridge tied load designs, which is the first time you blow up your uh, oscilloscope and an amplifier by attaching the ground of a scope lead to you to your negative speaker output. You quickly learn what a bridge tied load is. <laughs> you don't forget that lesson quickly. Uh, class D design issues. I wish more manufacturers would read this chapter. <laughs> Things like shoot through, which they don't seem to think is a thing. Yeah, fantastic book. I recommend it for anyone working on solid state uh, amplifiers of any type. Uh, but primarily the higher power ones like the um, PA amps and bass amps, sort of the 100 watt plus stuff where things can go awry before you even realize it and everything turns to uh, its elemental particles. 